Hello and welcome to GL Comics. My name is Ray Emling, your host. And I'm Chaz, the black guy. The one and only black guy you should feel privileged. Uh, no Maddie G tonight because tonight we are going to talk about some movies we saw uh, in, in the past couple months. And uh, Matt, unfortunately, has not seen any of them and therefore we did not want to ruin anything for him. So with that being said, I'm going to put put this in the uh, title as well as announce it right now. Spoiler alert. If you have not seen the movies Godzilla, The Amazing Spider-Man 2, and X-Men Days of Future Past, you may want to click away now. So, yeah, unfortunately, I'm, I mean, I hope uh, Matt wasn't in a video game coma with Dark Souls because he's been pretty into it lately if he hasn't platinum it already. But he's missing out, guys, let me tell you. Yeah, I mean, uh, since the season one break, we haven't actually heard from Matt. I think he might be dead. Like I said, Dark Souls comma, coma, coma, coma. Dark Souls comma. Yeah, yeah, Dark Souls comma. Uh, he uh, he got sucked into the game and he's fighting for his life while we're enjoying movies. And what that really happened? We're joking about that, and it really happened. Yeah, it's uh, it'd be pretty bad because we both suck at that game. Yeah, we would not be able to save him. I mean, like even if we got sucked into the game. You would be able to at least put up a fight. I would just sit around and eat mutton leg. Yeah, Matt, Matt would be screwed, to say the least. Yeah, so sorry, Matt. Hopefully uh, hopefully you rejoin us for the next episode. But welcome back. Welcome back to Season 2 of GEL Comics. This is an exciting time. And, uh, you know, to celebrate, I think today we're going to have a little bit of an extended episode. I don't know by how much. We're just going to talk and see where it goes. So, could be 35 minutes, could be six hours. I don't know. I don't I don't keep time like that. On lives. It could be. We could just keep talking until we die. And for me, that's probably going to be pretty soon because I, I had like seven monsters today and mixed it with a lot of different types of pain pills. So um, I don't know if that's healthy or not. So you would probably just talk really fast and then just stop suddenly. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, uh, I, I, I hurt my arm, so I took some pain pills, and then I got tired, so I mixed it with some Monster, and uh, not exactly the best choice. Six. Well, you know, I was really tired. All right. Well, uh, touche. Well, speaking of Monsters, this is a perfect segue. I didn't even plan this. The first movie we're going to talk about is the new 2014 Godzilla. One of my favorites, by the way. Yeah, I'm starting off with this because I feel like even though we want to talk about it so much, we're going to get redundant because really all there was to say about it was it was awesome. But uh, I'll, I'll jump to you, Chaz. How, what were your thoughts overall about the movie? Man, where do I start? So one of the things I first heard when I went to buy my ticket was the lady was like, oh, you know, some people liked it, some people hated it, which for these other movies, it was everyone loved it. I mean, unless you were insane, um, you liked it. It was a great movie. Uh, X-Men and Spider-Man 2 were awesome. Godzilla, I loved it. Um, the monster, first of all, looked like a great update from the classic Godzilla we all love. Um, I love the explanations that they had for Godzilla's existence and why he was doing what he does. Um, and what another thing that I really loved is that the commercials didn't give anything away. I was completely surprised going into this movie. It was great. I, I don't get a lot of that these time, you know, days like today where trailers just give everything away. So uh, we're going to try to do the same and not give too much away. But we can't help but talk about it and give some stuff away. So like I said, sp- spoiler alert. I don't know, man. What did you think about it? Well, first of all, I don't know what you're talking about, because I'm going to give everything away. That's why I said spoiler alerts, because everything I have to talk about is, is kind of a big deal. So, uh... Godzilla. <laughs> Godzilla has a child. That's only the, That's the first three minutes of the movie. No, I'm just kidding. We're not going back to that. No, I'm going to try my best not to give too much away, but some of the stuff I want to talk about is just, you know, it's going to give stuff away. So, spoiler alerts again. So, once again, if you didn't listen the first time, click away. Anyway... Uh, so my thoughts, honestly, visually, it was amazing. I definitely agree with you. I think that they, they made him look super intimidating and awesome, but at the same time, still kept some of the classic look of Godzilla. He didn't look too much like a, like a, a T-Rex or a, some type of giant lizard, like the 1998 Godzilla. He looked like the original Godzilla, but looked updated and it was done really well. Uh, the other monsters I thought were, were unique, 
Uh, they were new monsters, but at the same time, they kind of had that feel of an old monster, like you said. Um, on top of it all, uh, the story that I wanted to talk about, and this is where we get into some of the spoiler alerts. Uh, when I saw the movie to begin with, and I saw, I saw the first monster, and they were talking about how it was making sounds, and Godzilla answered. My first thought was. Why would Godzilla answer? That doesn't make sense. I mean, the other it's, there's got to be another monster. I did not see it coming that it was going to be a female. I well, and just to kind of go back for a second. I didn't even know that there were going to be other monsters uh, before this. Raymond and I, before we both saw the movie, Raymond and I were talking about we thought this was going to be like a uh, like the original horror film of Godzilla, where it was just Godzilla going around all po destroying the city. We come to find out, you got um, the other monsters that he's fighting, which is yeah. Great. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, like you said, the trailer did not give it away. Even in the commercials, like there's a commercial, a car commercial with Godzilla, and he's like eating cars and stuff. And even that, like, it's only Godzilla. Like, they did a great job of keeping it a secret. So we just ruined that for people who didn't listen to me. But whatever, I, I gave you a warning, so I don't care. Uh, but what I loved was it was such a twist to see that there was two monsters and that it was a male and a female and that it was getting ready to have, to have babies. And that, that to me was like, oh my gosh, like it, it kind of upped the stakes. Like I obviously knew Godzilla was going to win in the end. That's not even a spoiler alert. If you went to the movie like, Godzilla going to lose, I bet you he's going to lose, then, then you might be an idiot. But I mean, you might be a redneck. You might be a redneck. Um, but no, like when I saw the babies, it upped the stakes for me. I was like, he, if he doesn't stop this, like, Humanity has no chance. I was taking it like it was really happening, like right outside the theater. Like I was freaking out. I was like, "Godzilla, you gotta save us! We're gonna die." And you sound like Christopher Walken's when you say you, you, when when Raymond gets upset about something, he actually turns into Christopher Walken's. You should know that about him. So I get, like I morph into him, like literally, like I turn into a puddle and then come back as Walken. So I was it's, like, it's, I, I, I was like, "Godzilla, you gotta, you gotta stop him. You gotta, you gotta save us, or we're gonna die." It's scary, you know, because he transforms into it. He's like, I, I think something's happening. I'm going to die. You know, it's, it's, it's strenuous being his friend. Trust me. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a complicated individual. But uh, as far as uh, so, so overall, we both loved it. Uh, that's going to be a common theme with the rest of these. But uh, as far as Easter eggs go, I wrote down we're talking about Easter eggs. I only saw one. I'll see if, you know, I wonder if Chad did. But uh, I saw... When they first go back into the house after, you know, they nuke the town and whatever, um, they, they, like, the camera pans out, and you see one of those plastic containers that people used to collect bugs in, and there's, like, a, a cocoon in there that's been dead from the radiation and everything, and on the front of the container is a little sticker that says Mothra, and I thought that was hilarious, and I thought that was a cool Easter egg. I don't think there was much else. Uh, I was kind of hoping that there'd be a little jab in there at the 1998 Godzilla. I don't know how they would have done it, but I think that would have been funny, but you know, whatever. There is one Easter egg. Um, it's, it's nothing, it's no throwback or anything like that, but it's actually a prequel to what the, one of the monsters is going to look like before you even get to see them. Yeah, it's a poster of it uh, wreaking havoc. And, uh, and I think the same place that they saw the, um, the Mothra thing too, I actually went and saw it again the other day and I saw that. So, uh, something else to look for. What was the poster of? It was one of the monsters. Um, one of the, I think it was the male, because it was a little bit smaller. And okay. Was, you know, yeah, it was a poster of it. That's kind of cool. Um, the only other thing, it wasn't really an Easter egg, but it was funny, is they put Brian Cranston in a in a hazmat suit with a gas mask, and I thought that was hilarious. That was I, was, I was upset it wasn't bright yellow. <laughs> I think it would have been too obvious. But still, it would have been hilarious. It's like, hey, why is Walter White here? Like, what's going on? Oh my goodness, it's Walter White. See, it's happening. See, it happened again. Exactly. Oh, another thing I want to mention, uh, this isn't the whole Easter egg thing. I think we're pretty much done with the Easter eggs. But um, the, the whole theme of it, and this is why I love why they explain what uh, Godzilla is really doing here and why he's doing what he's doing. But... Uh, it, if you put it together, the theme of Godzilla is he's kind of like Earth's police force. Yeah. And when things don't go right, he sets them right. He, he sets everything straight. Uh, it, these monsters are here and he doesn't like it. So he's, I couldn't help but 
to like play the cops theme song in my head the whole time I was, <laughs> I was watching the movie. Well, yeah, we kind of we kind of talked about it the other day that like they did a really good job of making him the good guy without without making him like too much of a good guy. Like there was movies in the past where they made him like the ultimate good guy, and there's scenes of him with like baby Godzilla, and there he's like teaching him how to breathe fire and how to love, and it got really cheesy. They did a good job of making it very animalistic that he's not really a good guy. He could care less about people. All he's there to do is to to show his dominance because he's an alpha. He's the king of the monsters and these other monsters are infringing on his turf and he's going to take them out. It's not necessarily that he was trying to save people. He was just indifferent about them. They didn't matter to him. He just wanted to kill off the other monsters. That was it. Yeah, and uh, if you if you watch the movie too, you'll see Godzilla's been around for a long time. I mean, I want to go into detail about how long he's been around, but he's been around a long time. You'll see that when you watch the movie. But these other monsters that were just born, when he's fighting them, you see Godzilla's experience. Oh yeah, um, and just watch how he fights. Uh, you'll see that he he's been around for a while. And he knows how to fight, which is great. Absolutely. Uh, so as far as the ending goes, you know, it kind of, I mean, it's just like a typical Godzilla movie. He walks off into the sunset and I really enjoyed that. I thought that that was kind of the best way to do it. Like, you know, instead of, instead of some epic, like the people of earth have to now figure out how to beat Godzilla. Like he just kind of moseys back into the water. Doesn't care. Yeah. Again, realistically, Godzilla's tired anyway. Exactly. my, like Rayman said, um, this is pretty typical Godzilla ending. And if anyone who's seen the original Godzilla, I think, will appreciate that. I, I did. Uh, I don't think a lot of people did. And I, I've been to the theater twice to see it. And uh, some people liked it. A lot of people didn't. So. Yeah. So as far as what it means for the future, because, you know, and like I said, this is a huge spoiler alert. But that's, that's why I'm putting this as a spoiler alert, because... I want to talk about what it means in the future, and obviously I won't be able to talk about that without revealing the ending, but since Godzilla lives and kind of meanders back into the water, it leaves it open for a sequel. It, it leaves it open to, uh, you know, something else. Some, some other monster comes back, and I believe they even kind of mentioned it like, I can't remember for sure. You saw it twice, so you might know, but I think the Japanese doctor in it said something like, he'll, he'll always be our protector or something like that, or he'll always be here to set the order straight. And... That's perfect. That means that they could come back with another movie that, you know, I want to see King Ghidorah get, get in here. Obviously, change his origin story a little bit because having him be an alien is, would be weird. But let's bring in a three-headed dragon and have Godzilla come back and kick some butt. That's what I think would be cool. It definitely leaves it open for sequels like that. Yeah, I mean, I would love to see it too, realistically. But again, I think they're taking a realistic spin on this. Um, the whole alien dragon thing, who would want to see a three dragon come back and fight godzilla don't know if it's gonna happen I, it may have just been a, a thing a project that they were doing but you know we'll wait and see and we'll, we'll definitely update on gel's uh page if we see anything in the in the near future absolutely that is uh facebook.com slash gel comics that's facebook.com slash gel comics seamless yes, plug so. seamless plug yes um as far as other future projects i would love to see I definitely think it'd be open to do a, a Mecha Godzilla fight because obviously they're not going to have Mecha Godzilla come from space. But let's keep it simple. Let's have a crazy scientist think that Godzilla is a, a real threat, and the, the U.S. government sets up a fund to make a Mecha Godzilla, uh, make a Mecha Godzilla to in, in case like I've already got it written in my head pretty much. Like the U.S. government puts a fund together to make a Mecha Godzilla in case he ever comes back, and some crazy scientist decides to go AWOL with it and starts using it to control controls it and starts trying to take over the city or take over the U.S. and kind of holds the military at bay and all that destruction makes Godzilla come back and fight it. It Obviously, it sounds a little cheesy coming out of my mouth, but I think with proper writers, they could make that happen, and I think it'd be a pretty interesting story arc. Right, and actually uh, making a robot in the, sh- the form of Godzilla would make sense because Godzilla is like the perfect predator. So mm-hmm. we make a robot in the form of Godzilla. It makes sense to me in that, in that form. Um, yeah, I would like to see it. it would be pretty cool. 
Yeah, I definitely think that'd make a perfect second movie because, you know, now they know Godzilla's out there, so it's time to, you know, and that's the U.S. government for you, like, holy cow, we have monsters among us, let's figure out how to defeat them in case it ever happens again, and that would be their next gradual step. It, it'd be kind of like Pacific Rim, except it would be giant, a giant mecha Godzilla to fight Godzilla, instead of, like, regular human-sized mo- or robots or whatever. Humanoid, that's the word you're looking for. Human, like, not you. Yeah, humanoid, thank you. Uh, so... All right, so that's the end of Godzilla. So if you've seen Godzilla and you listen to this part and you haven't seen Amazing Spider-Man, I'm going to break this up into parts for people so that you don't get overwhelmed with spoilers. So we're done with Godzilla. Moving on to Amazing Spider-Man. So if you have not seen the Amazing Spider-Man 2, now is your chance to click away. So <clears throat> Amazing Spider-Man, I'm just going to jump right into it, Chad. What did you think of the movie? Again, man, it was great. This has been a great summer for movies so far. I've been like a kid in a candy shop, man. Um, Spider-Man 2, uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2 was great. I don't even know where to start, man. Uh, I loved what they did with the uh, with the villains. I love what they did with... Uh, was that Hobgoblin, Raymond? Uh, no, it was it's Son of the Goblin. Hobgoblin is... I can't remember the guy's name. Um... It's someone who steals uh, the Green Goblin glider and um, becomes Hobgoblin. So it's not Harry Osborn. It's not Norman Osborn. Um, I'm looking up his name right now. Uh, Roderick Kingsley, it was the first one. Um, okay. It's a guy basically who essentially stole the the glider from Norman Osborn and became his own goblin. So it wasn't Hobgoblin. It, it, that is more more known as Son of the Goblin. Okay. Well, whatever the case may be, um, if you watch the movie, um, I, the, one of the problems I had with the original Hobgob or uh, Green Goblin in the crappy old Spider-Man movie, um, he had a mask. This was military-tested equipment, and somehow he got a Green Goblin mask. I guess um, future military personnel are going to be ma- wearing uh, creepy Goblin masks. Uh, but his face was contorted in one because of uh, a uh, medical condition that he had. So that, that seamlessly fit into the uh, storyline. I thought it was great. Um, you get glimpses of the rhino at the very end, which is great. Um, let's see. I don't know, man. Uh, remind me. It's been a while since I've seen it. I want you to tell me some stuff, Ray. Um, well, first of all, I definitely think I was shocked how much I enjoyed Electro. Uh, because here's the thing. Even though Electro was technically the main villain, he wasn't the main focus. And that was done properly is you kind of bring in a beloved character from the Spider-Man comic books, but at the same time, like, people like Electro, but he's not big enough to be, like, a, a central fo- focal point. So they did a very good job of bringing Electro in, and uh, if you've seen the movie, like you said, spoilers, but if you've seen the movie, basically Spider-Man beats him the first time, then he's in prison for half the movie. And uh, sp- then you get to focus on Spider-Man's relationship with his dad, his relationship with Harry, his relationship with Gwen, and you get to kind of see more of Peter uh, than Spider-Man. And you get you get all that background story, and then at the end, Electro escapes, and, and then you get a big epic fight scene. I thought that was perfect, because you get to you get to develop a, a villain, and then at the same time, you don't overwhelm the crowd with a villain who doesn't have that great of a backstory. Are you getting any vibes from, like, the Dark Knight series? Because I feel like Christopher Nolan did that with the Dark Knight series. He kind of pulled in, like, a side villain and then had a main villain. Uh, and that, that turned out to be really successful for the for the Dark Knight series. And um, maybe Spider-Man's trying. I don't know. It's funny you said that because after I saw The Amazing Spider-Man 1, I thought that. However, based on the second movie, I'm not getting that vibe anymore. Because the way Nolan did it was... Batman Begins, you had Scarecrow, Scarecrow and Ra's al Ghul, and, you know, those are lesser-known villains. So then in Amazing Spider-Man 1, you bring in the Lizard, who's a lesser-known villain. So I thought that. I thought, you know, origin story, you bring in a lesser-known vil- villain so it doesn't overshadow Spider-Man. Then you get into the Amazing Spider-Man 2, which, with Nolan, he, he came to the Dark Knight with the Joker. That was, that. I mean, that was amazing. I thought that Amazing Spider-Man 2 was going to either have... Uh, Green Goblin or Venom, if he went the route of Nolan. But because he chose Electro and, and uh, sorry, it's not Son of the Goblin, uh, it's New Goblin. My bad. I looked it up. But uh, I didn't want to, don't want the nerds who are nerdier than me to get angry with me. But yeah, 
uh, going with New Goblin and Electro kind of di- differs from the Nolan way of, of thinking. So I'm not exactly sure what route they're going. I know, um, you know, like I said, with the uh, we're going to get into Easter eggs anyway, so I'll just jump right into it. But at, at the end of the movie, you see a little hall of like different mechanical things. It's the same room that Harry gets his uh, Goblin Glider. It's a pair of uh, robotic, four robotic arms, which is obviously um, Doc Ock, a pair of robotic wings, which is Vulture, and then the Rhino suit. Uh, So that makes me think that they're kind of leading into the Sinister Six. Um, And we talked about this briefly, of who the Sinister Six were. Um, I'm not sure what incarnation they're going to do, though, because there's been different, different rosters of the Sinister Six for quite a while, so I'm not exactly sure what... Uh, what version they're going to go with. Uh, the original were um, the original Sinister Six were Doc Ock, who was the leader, Electro, which that would fit because he was in this recently, Sandman, Craven the Hunter, Mysterio, and Vulture. Uh, because I mean, we had Doc Ock and Vulture, and Electro was in it, but I don't think he's actually supposed to be a member of the Sinister Six in this capacity. I think the way they're going to go is we've seen three. We've seen Doc Ock, Vulture, and Rhino. I don't think, uh, I think the Goblin's going to be one, but I don't think Harry was. I think Norman, I don't think Norman's dead. We never saw a body, so that's all I'm going to say. Uh, I think Norman's going to come back as Green Goblin and be the fourth member, and then I think the last two will be either um, Serio or they could bring Ben on. Norman Osborn was in jail at the end. That wasn't Norman Osborn. Oh, yeah, 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 that was, Okay. Uh, yeah, that was Harry who was in jail, and the guy talking to him is everyone seems to believe it's a it's a ma- man called the gentleman who has no powers of his own, but he's kind of like a an agent of chaos. Like he's gonna be the one. I think he's gonna end up being the one that forms the Sinister Six. Which actually, mi- thinking of that, I think the Lizard might be part of the Sinister Six then, because in the, at the end of Amazing Spider-Man one, the same guy visits uh, the Lizard in prison. So I think what's going to happen is, uh, by movie three, he's going to be leading that group of six. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of the uh, the whole series of movies leading up to the Avengers, except reverse roles now. We're doing the villain side now. So yeah. Nick Fury. Yeah, exactly. So I I don't know what the, I don't know if Orm, or Norman is dead or not. Uh, they made it seem like he was, but like I said, we never saw the body. We ne- we never even saw the funeral scene. So I think they may have finally found a cure for that disease and they, t- they took him away deep in the labs of Oscorp and, and fixed him up because until I see a funeral or, or a body, even a funeral wouldn't do it for me until I see the dead body put in the ground. I don't think Norman Osborn's dead. I don't think they're going to kill off the green goblin before he's the green goblin. Yeah. And the same goes for electro. I mean, we, we saw him explode or overcharge, uh, but he's, He's able to disembody and then reform again, so we're assuming that maybe he's still alive somewhere as well. Yeah, that's definitely uh, true. So, um, comparison to the original movies, um, I definitely think it's better. We we talked about this briefly. Me and Matt talked about this in the Spider-Man podcast. I love Andrew Garfield over Tobey Maguire. I used to love Tobey Maguire. And the thing is, you know, I talk to people who who haven't quite seen... Not quite seen that. that, They they haven't seen The Amazing Spider-Man. And they say... I don't like it because Tobey Maguire is always going to be the best Spider-Man. But here's what I tell them is, what are you comparing that to? He's been the only Spider-Man. You can't say he's the best until someone else gives it a shot. And I think Andrew Garfield has knocked it out of the park, and I definitely think he's better. Yeah, and really you can't even say that just because no one else has tried to play the part that he's not the best. Let's say, you know... uh, Wolverine. Who else could play Wolverine? And who else could play Iron Man? I don't know. <laughs> but definitely uh, Spider Man. Yeah, yeah. I I guess see what you're saying about the about Wolverine, and Iron Man. That's true. But I don't know. I just think like I don't know. If someone came along and played Iron Man again, I would be skeptical that they could do better than Robert Downey Jr. But until I see it for myself, I I wouldn't make that conclusion because. You know, like the same thing happened with uh, when when the first Amazing Spider-Man came out. I was skeptical. I said, you know, Tobey Maguire was really good. I don't know if, if they're gonna find someone better. 
and then I went and saw it. I was like, oh, no, he was, he was better. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, I like the new guy. Um, Toby Maguire was okay, but I think uh, I think his own movies was the doom of him. Yeah, it's true. I mean, they made him a lot more whiny. He cried a lot more. They didn't make him as smart. Like, and me and Matt talked about this briefly too. That like he was a nerdy kid, but until that one scene in Spider-Man Two where he talks like physics with Doc Ock. You never really get to see the genius of Peter Parker, and this these new movies are doing a really good job of showing you how smart he actually is. Like, there's a scene in the, in the new one where he's trying to figure out how to make his web shooter uh, invincible to uh, Electro's electricity, and him and Gwen together come up with the idea of magnetism, uh, so that it's it's magnetic and it won't. Yeah, I mean, you're smarter than I am, so you'd be able to explain it better. But like, he came up with that kind of solution, and he he fixed it. Right. Yeah. This was a uh, this is a really cool scene. I just studied this stuff in physics um, this semester too, so it was it was more fun for me to see it in uh, in play. But uh, I do like seeing the genius of him. And another thing I like about Spider Man in this uh, in this group in this universe is that he's way more witty. Spider Man yes. is extremely amusing. Watching him beat up on bad guys in these series, uh, and he always has been in the comics and video games and TV shows. He's always been wisecracking, and Tobey Maguire did a bit of that, but I don't know if it was if it was poor writing for the jokes or if he just couldn't deliver them right, but I find Andrew Garfield much funnier. Yeah, me too. Um, I mean, the very first few scenes in Spider-Man 2 is just, it, it had me rolling. It was hilarious. Uh, he was, it was like watching Deadpool. Uh, yes. He was really witty. And he added a lot of insult to Andrew. It was great. Yeah. So, getting into the ending, huge spoiler alerts coming. I called it, though. When me and Matt did the Amazing Spider-Man 2 podcast, which, Chaz, if you haven't listened to it, shame on you. You better go listen to it soon. But anyway, when we did that, I said, as far as predictions, that Gwen Stacy was going to die. And sure enough, I knew it before the first trailer came out because... In the comic books, Gwen Stacy's death is a very specific story arc. Um, and it all starts with the death of Captain Stacy. Once Captain Stacy dies, that leads into the death of Gwen Stacy. And when he died in The Amazing Spider-Man 1, I was like, yep, it's time. She's going to die in the next movie because we have to eventually have a meet Mary Jane. As much as I love Emma Stone as Gwen Stacy, they... I think they should have reversed it. I think they should have made Emma Stone Mary Jane and got some random bimbo to be Gwen Stacy because <laughs> I knew she, she has to die. That's the way he, he ends up with Mary Jane is because of Gwen Stacy's death. So I definitely, I, I knew that was coming and I love that they did it exactly like the comic books. Not quite exactly. Uh, in the comic books, when he shoots the web and saves her, the whiplash snaps her neck. They made it a little more gruesome in this movie because it's like he stopped her, but her, her skull hit the ground, and it it was yeah. a little more gruesome than, than just whiplash. Yeah, I don't know if her back hit the ground first or her head. Whatever hit the ground, it was, it was definitely broke. Yeah, something like you you heard the snap, and so I I mean, and that was such a touching scene too. Like it was so like I didn't I didn't tear up, but like I I got sad. I was like, holy crap! Like I and I knew it was coming too. I was like, man. This is depressing. All right. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? Uh, in terms of actresses, I, you know, it's not going to happen, but uh, Scarlett Johansson as Mary Jane would be pretty awesome. Yeah. Just saying. I don't think they'd go that far. She's too old, though. She's awesome. Mary Jane needs to be younger. Um, I, it sucks, though, that Emma Stone isn't going to be Mary Jane because Emma Stone and Andrew Garfield are dating in real life. So that chemistry really came off between Gwen and Peter. And I don't think any other actress is going to be able to match that. I didn't know that. Yeah, they're, they're dating in real life. So that's why when you see that chemistry on screen with them, I mean, it's real. Like, they, like when they laugh at each other and, and jokes and stuff, that's coming off so well because it, it's really there. So I don't think, like, no matter what actress they get, it's not going to be as good as her. And that's unfortunate because uh, I hope, hopefully... Now that they're moving into Mary Jane territory and she's not going to know he's Spider-Man for a while if, if they do it like the comics, hopefully there's less of those lovey-dovey scenes because they're not going to come off as well as they did with Emma Stone. So 
it that is salvageable. You bring Mary Jane and you have them date whatever, but you focus more on the Spider Man side and not on the Peter side. Sure. Yeah. I um uh, I again I don't really care about the human uh romance relationships in these movies. Um, but you know, I'm gonna go back to Godzilla and mention this one as well. Spider Man two and Godzilla, I thought the relationships were tasteful. I do come into these to see giant monsters fighting and super villain superhero battles. So um I thought the relationship was t- tasteful and I was able to stomach it. Yeah. So I hope they keep up with this uh this pattern. <laughs> Yeah, and absolutely, so like I said, well, I was going to say, like, because of the chemistry between them, it made it tolerable. It wasn't unbearable to watch because they, like, at, I'm not ashamed to say, like, I actually thought they were very cute together. I was like, like, I'm watching it and I'm like, oh, that's sweet. Go shoot some web, but oh, that's sweet. Anyway, uh, I had on tap to talk about what it means for the future, but we kind of already talked about it. I, you know, Mary Jane's going to end up in the, in the series now. Uh, I think the Sinister Six is going to come in. Uh, I definitely think whatever's happening for Spider-Man 3 is going to be pretty epic because there's going to be a lot of changes. Right. So uh, how about our third movie? Yes. Least, but not, last, but not, last but not least. Absolutely. Uh, if you could learn to talk. Um, the last but movie. So know. we are now done with Amazing Spider-Man. So, spoiler alerts again. If you have not seen X-Men Days of Future Past, this is your time to click away. X-Men, Days of Future Past. I love this movie. I honestly, ha- I put it up there with Avengers. I'm not quite sure if, if it beats Avengers for me. What, what beat, my way of deciding what's better is, like, I loved Captain America the first time I saw it. And I said, I was like, I liked it better than Avengers. Then I went and saw it again, and then immediately after watched Avengers, and I was like, yeah, no, I still like Avengers. So I'm going to kind of try and do the same thing with X-Men. I'm going to go see the movie again and then watch Avengers afterwards and see which one I like more. But honestly, I love this movie. There was not a single part of, of it to me that I was not enjoying. So let's get your overall thoughts, Chaz. What did you think of the movie? First of all, I'm going to poke fun at you, Raymond, and say that... uh Wolverine was kind of punk in this movie. I know he took away his, his uh, claws, but without his adamantium, I don't know, man. Uh, he couldn't even get a swat in on Magneto. So, uh, that, I think Wolverine. that was good, though. I think that was actually good because it made him human. Because that's been a common complaint about every X-Men movie is that it's all Wolverine-focused and he's like the big hero of every single movie. This did a good job of making him the hero, but also making him vulnerable. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Wolverine's still B.A. With oh, yeah. Without the, 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 um, he's, I mean, there's a scene where he goes, when he, the first scene where he's back in time, it shows how B.A. Wolverine really is. And I'm, I'm counting the moments that's saying how B.A. this guy is. But uh, Wolverine's great. Again, I love the fact that they didn't focus entirely on him. And I think plenty of mutants got uh, screen time. And I was able to kind of focus more on... Uh, more characters uh, this time around. Uh, was it Quicksilver? Yeah. You get to see? One of my favorites, man. You're going to love him if you see this movie. Yeah, Quicksilver um, was pretty great. Quicksilver was, he was uh, a highlight, but at the same time wasn't overshadowing. Okay. And I got to ask you a question, Raymond. Uh, is Quicksilver the son of Magneto? Yes, he is. And uh, I was, when I first started watching the movie, I was getting really pissed off because. I was like, are they going to make it? Like, Because Michael Fassbender, I didn't realize how old he actually is. In my mind, he's in like his 20s. But I think he's actually more in his like mid, mid-30s. So when I first started watching it, I was like, there's no way. If it's Michael Fassbender, they're not going to be able to have Quicksilver as his son, blah, 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 blah. But then as I'm starting to watch it, I'm seeing, well, you know, the kid's only supposed to be like 16. And then Michael Fassbender, it, it, I don't know how old he is in real life, but Magneto at this point in time is supposed to be probably like 35, 36. So I'm like, it's definitely possible that he hooked up with someone when he was 20, had a kid, blah, blah, blah. And then they hint at it. Uh, spoiler alert again, I don't care. I Like I said, I, I've given you fair warning enough. Uh, when they're in the elevator, uh, the Quicksilver guy talks to Magneto and he says, uh, oh, you can, you, you can control metal? My mom wants to do a guy that control metal. And they kind of hint at it without directly telling you. 
Right. Same here. Um, you know, the relationships don't follow the story exactly. I mean, uh, Raymond and I have talked about how the juggernaut is actually Xavier's brother. We don't see him at all. Um, of course, I think he's the younger brother anyway. Well, so maybe and he's, he, well, he's actually um, not brother-in-law. He's uh, half-brother. Like, so it's still possible because what, what it, all it means is that um, – Xavier's mom, I can't remember for sure how the relationship works. They're not they're not full brothers. Um, I think it's Xavier Xavier's brother, but it's a different father or something. So for all we know, Juggernaut could be, you know, with the other parents. So we don't really know where he is. Or they just haven't mentioned him yet. Like maybe he, they did have and you know each other growing up and they went their separate ways and we just haven't experienced him yet. So they could still definitely tie it back in and be his brother. Um, the only thing that kind of ruins that is that X-Men 3, he was in it, and Z Xavier had no reaction to seeing his brother. But other than that. Uh, yeah, so I think they left that one out. Uh, furthermore, I know that this, this isn't related to the, uh, the whole X-Men Origins movie, um, and I don't recall, it's been a while since I've seen it, but Cyclops um, should be a lot older than he's been depicted. So I think that they left out the fact that he is much older and um, should have maybe been born around that time. Yeah, right he, he should have. I mean, well, maybe not necessarily born, but like, okay, there were some major screw-ups in the movies uh, between X-Men First Class and um, X-Men Origins Wolverine. The, the line gets very cloudy because in X-Men First Class, a young Charles Xavier in his 30s or so meets Havoc. Uh, Alex Summers, who is Cyclops' younger brother. Therefore, if that's the case, that was the kid in, in the second, in the new movie that's in the barracks that has like the similar power to Cyclops. So that's supposedly, that's in the comic books, that is Cyclops' younger brother. Therefore, if that's his younger brother, that means he should be somewhere else older. He should be around, he should be at least close to Charles Xavier's age. I think the kid's yeah. supposed to be like, you know, in his teens, but he should be alive. So then we go over to X-Men Origins Wolverine. Oh, and then the timeline also gets cloudy too because um, in X-Men First Class, the first X-Men First Class, Emma Frost is in it as, you know, like a 20-something year old. So then we go over to X-Men Origins Wolverine and we see a 16-year-old or so Emma Frost and a 16 or so year old Cyclops and they talk to a Patrick Stewart, Charles Xavier, which right. the timeline does not work out. Like, how is it that Emma Frost is in her 20s, which she's with James McAvoy, but she's 16 or so with Cyclops when they see Charles Xavier as Pat or Patrick Stewart as Charles Xavier? So uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine kind of ruined a lot of stuff. But that jumps into one of the other things I want to talk about is because the movie is all about time travel, it fixes all those screw ups from Last Stand, X-Men Origins and First Class. Because it, it, and big spoilers right here, at the end of the movie, when you see Jean Grey and Cyclops are both alive again, it essentially, because they changed the, the past, that it fixes all those mistakes from Last Stand. So Cyclops is now alive. Jean Grey is still alive. Um, on top of all that, uh, I also believe uh, it fixes the whole, I don't know how exactly it's going to fix the whole Victor Creed um, Wolverine being brothers, I think they just may not mention that. But here's the biggest thing for you, Chaz. It fixes the Deadpool debacle. If yeah, that's if, a big one for me. Well, I'm just saying, like, if they went back in time, they could essentially because obviously, you know, in '73 when this movie takes place, Wolverine still has the bone claws, which means it is before the event of, of X Men Origins Wolverine before he gets the adamantium claws. Therefore, if that changes stuff, and I think that's also. At the very end of the movie, when you see Stryker and it's Mystique instead of Stryker, I think that was their way of like kind of erasing X Men Origins, because that means that hopefully Wolverine still gets his adamantium claws. They never showed that. I'm not sure if that cancels out the Weapon X project or not. Yeah, I know that's the one thing I'm curious about because if she's posing as Stryker, I doubt she poses as Stryker the, the whole time though. So she probably just posed as Stryker. It was probably just like a big like scare thing. Like, you see Strikers saving Wolverine, you're like, oh no, the experiments are going to happen now, and then you find out, oh, it's Mystique, so it's okay. But I'm sure he got his hands on him later. 
However, I do think it'll fix the whole Deadpool issue. I think because technically the events of Origins didn't happen exactly that way, that Deadpool's going to end up coming back into play as regular Deadpool. Yeah, yeah. So if they decide to do a Deadpool movie, uh, I kind of doubt they're going to mix it in with the X-Men uh, series. But, um, you know, hopefully they can justify what went on there. Well, Obviously, the good thing... The good thing about a Deadpool movie, though, is that it's going to poke fun at itself because he does break the fourth wall. I'm really hoping that the movie opens, if they have Ryan Reynolds, which I think they're trying to get, if it ever does happen, I really hope the movie opens with the X-Men Origins version of Deadpool and like it shows him with the, with the, the mouth sewn shut and the swords coming out of his wrist and everything, and then all of a sudden Deadpool pops on screen and goes, no, we're just kidding. <laughs> that would be good that would be the easiest way to make fun of that whole debacle and then move on yeah but it, you know it depends on who's doing the movie too i've actually heard that deadpool the movie has been has switched hands a few times so i don't oh, know yeah. who it belongs. they didn't have the rights to do something like that i i don't know anyway i i i have no idea if it's even getting made i think the closest we're gonna get for a while is the deadpool game but uh as far as easter eggs go um they're not really Easter eggs per se, but near the end of the movie, you kind of see that at the very beginning of the movie, I was really, I was really angry because they show that Shadow Cat is with Iceman, and I was angry about that. He's like, no, they don't belong together. That doesn't happen. And especially since Colossus was in those scenes, like if if Colossus hadn't been there, I would have wrote it off as, oh, Colossus is dead. She's moved on to Iceman. But no, in the comic books, Colossus and Shadow Cat get married. And so to see Shadowcat with Bobby Drake and Colossus in the background doing nothing, I'm like, okay, what are they doing? They're screwing things up already. But then at the end of the movie where we see the alternate alternate t- future where everything's fixed now, you see Shadowcat with um, Colossus. And at the same time, you see Rogue with Iceman, which is how things are meant to be. So I, although Rogue eventually does end up with Gambit, but... Um, for now, I can handle Rogue with Iceman as long as Shadowcat's back with Colossus the way it's supposed to be. And uh, I'm guessing this was the director's way of justifying everything for the comic book nerds out there. Like saying, hey, see, look, we fixed it, guys. Yeah, well, they did. And, and here's why they had to fix it. You missed the post credit scene, right? You you haven't gone back and seen it? No, I haven't had a chance to go back and see it, seen All it right. yet. Well, the post credit scene is uh, when, when it starts showing, like it goes up like a mound of sand, and you see a guy dressed in like pharaoh robes holding his hands up, telekinetically moving uh, the pyramids into place. Then the camera pans around, and you see the guy's face, and it's, it's blue. It's not like, not like beast blue, like kind of a pale blue, and in the background you see four horsemen. It's apocalypse, and I am so freaking excited. Oh, man, what is I mean, is there going to be, are we starting over now, you think? They're not necessarily starting over, but it's going to start, because the year that all the future stuff happened, when that Wolverine ends up in at the very end of the movie, is the year 2023. So that's where it's going to take place now. And here's what I think happened. So the scene is in ancient Egyptian times. It's En Sabanur. That's the guy, that's Apocalypse's name. And his origin story is, he's one of the very first mutants, if not the first mutant. And uh, he, not only is he a mutant, but he fuses with alien technology and becomes Apocalypse and becomes essentially immortal. And what I think happens is, I think in the, in the regular timeline, the reason we never saw Apocalypse was because the Sentinel program hunted him down and killed him. However, without the Sentinels, now he is free to, to come to power and, and, and basically attempt his, his attack on the world. And because that is happening, I think now the next movie, it's already been out, it's called X-Men Age of Apocalypse. I didn't know that until I looked it up after I saw Apocalypse, but there's another movie, and I think it's going to have all the original cast members, including James Marsden as Cyclops and Jean Grey back. So I think the reason why they show you that scene and show you that Jean Grey's alive, Rogue's alive, uh, Cyclops is alive, and it shows you everybody is because they're going to be in the next movie as the, the original X-Men, and it's almost going to be like X-Men 4. Like, it's it's going to be a, like a direct like replacement 
uh, from first class and everything like that. That's uh, pretty exciting. I mean, I thought this was going to be the ultimate, the ending X-Men. Uh, now we see, I didn't get a chance to see it. So it's pretty exciting to me to know that there's something else to look forward to. Maybe 2016 would be reasonable. What do you think? Uh, yeah, maybe 2016, maybe summer 2017. I'm not 100% sure. All I know is I think the first class cast may be done. I think they're done. Um, and I think it's going to be the original cast back. I think it's going to be, you know, all everyone from the first three X-Men movies kind of back. Uh, the only thing I think that I think will be difficult is if Mystique is in the movie, who to use? Because Rebecca Romaine was good, but I think Jennifer Lawrence did better. And I mean... Same I, here. What? Same here. I agree. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm wondering if they, if everyone else will be the original cast, but if they just will replace Rebecca Romaine with Jennifer Lawrence, because most of the time she is blue or is as somebody else, they could pull it off. Yeah, definitely. Uh, just to kind of segue for a second, there were a lot of gruesome deaths in this movie. Yeah, I was. I mean, I mean, it was great. I thought it was a really cool way to kill off some characters, but end up you know being like, ah, oh, never mind. Yeah, I mean, these were some pretty uh, traditional uh, comic book ways of killing off heroes. I mean, just to kind of spoil it for you guys, but I'm, I'm done talking about spoilers. Uh, but Colossus gets ripped in half. Oh, uh, yeah. Sentiment. Oh, my gosh. That was, yeah, that was awesome. A storm gets impaled. Oh, my holy crap. Yeah, who oh. got their face melted off? Uh, I don't know who got I think it was that guy who threw the, I don't know what his, I don't even know who that was. But uh, Bob. Bobby Drake gets his head cut off and then crushed. Yeah, yeah, it was some uh, Mortal Kombat fatality. <laughs> it was, it was legit. Um, what did you think of Bishop? Because I've always loved Bishop, and I'm sure, I, I, as a black man, I'm sure you're always looking for really awesome black characters in comic books. Besides Luke Cage, and and I don't even know if Black Panther can, is considered cool, but Luke Cage is one of the cooler ones. But I've always thought Bishop was a cool, cool character. So I'm wondering what you think of him. Bishop was B.A., and uh, I love the way he came off. Really, they didn't even have to do anything to him. Let's take a black guy, give him some contact lenses, some tattoos, and give him dreadlocks. Now we've got our Bishop. Uh, yeah. He was a pretty B.A. character. Uh, and I like how they, you know, the X-Men and the mutants have worked together this long time. So you've got uh, people from the Brotherhood and X-Men working together now. And I like how they had this seamless teamwork going on. Um, yeah. So Bishop was charged up by another mutant, by um, Storm, and uh, he'd fire off his guns. What was, uh, what was the chick who could shoot uh, wor wormholes out? I forget her name. I don't remember her name, but she was cool. It was almost, it reminded me of the game Portal. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. Um, I definitely think uh, in the next movie, I think Magneto's still going to be alive. It's going to be Ian McKellen again, and I think that we're going to see a team up again. Because in the comic books, when Apocalypse shows up, the Brotherhood and the X Men put their put their differences aside and team up because Apocalypse is the the biggest threat they've ever had to face. So I definitely think that we're going to see another Brotherhood X Men team up. See, I don't even see how they would have ever split up in the first place if history went if history corrected itself and went the way that it did. Um, the Brotherhood, well, no, no, because Magneto left. Yeah, so he, he never walked would've. away. Right, so he, there probably still was a brotherhood. Yeah, so, so there, yeah. it probably was still, there probably was, you know, the brotherhood of evil mutants, and some of the events probably still took place. However, I definitely think when Apocalypse shows up, they're going to put those differences aside. Agreed, yeah, that makes sense. But, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, overall, three amazing movies. I kind of put them in the order of how much I like them, like from least to, to favorite. And that's the thing, not saying, like, I didn't like Godzilla. I love Godzilla. I just liked Amazing Spider-Man more. And then on top of that, I loved X-Men more. So I kind of put it in that order because I knew it had more to talk about for each. Right. I agree. Um, you know, on top of the movies, too, um, so just if we could segue for a second, Ray, um, I did a little research. And um, for you gamers out there, um, what is it? Uh, people who made GTA. Wow. And I just had the names in mind. Um, there's a new Red Dead Redemption supposedly in the making, and they're talking about releasing it possibly in 2014 this year. Um, we're going to see if they're going to reveal it um, in the new convention this year. Past convention, I think. 
do you know anything about it? How, how it's going to be, like, how is it going to happen? Because, spoiler alerts again, uh, John Marston dies. So is it going to be a, is it going to be a prequel or is it going to be maybe a sequel with a different character? Well, I don't know. The way that uh, Rockstar came, games do their GTA games, there's no carryover from previous games in terms Generally. of characters. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm guessing they might do a maybe. Um, I know the old West was dying in Red Dead Redemption, so you know they probably wouldn't have cowboys and Indians sort of gameplay. I don't know how they would change that because the old West is 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 dying. Yeah. Or if you play the games, John Marston dies, but the very last scene, there's a scene after the credits where you get to play as his son and get vengeance on his death. Oh, okay. So you could play as John Marston's older or son grown up. I don't know. Okay. But the way Rockstar Games does it, I doubt it. They'll probably just come up with a whole new universe or something. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. But yeah, I'm looking forward to a uh, new Red Dead Redemption. I liked it more than the GTA games. I thought it was a fresh new type of gameplay. And then we had the new downloadable undead content, which was amazing. It was some of the best um, zombie gameplay I've ever played, especially third person. And it was downloadable content and cheap. It was great. Um, you, you had awesome um, little Easter eggs like the Four Horses um war pestilence death and uh what was the other one famine whatever whatever it was yeah so uh awesome downloadable content like rockstar is known for doing but we're gonna look for 2014 and possibly next year absolutely um, but look for, look for the pax convention that that's might that might be when they'll release the information for it i think the best thing for them would be to go the route they did with gta 5 and make an online multiplayer where you can create a character because that was one big thing for that was a big selling point for me to gta 5 because i like gta but after a while it's like okay yeah I, the story's not a hundred percent good all the time and you know like i get tired of going around just stealing cars and doing stuff but i like the online because me and my brother-in-law will can actually jump on together and kind of create like our own miniature crime syndicate. So it's kind of fun to do that kind of stuff. So I definitely, um, I definitely like the idea of doing that in Red Dead, Red Dead Redemption. But uh, well, you know, yeah, I agree with you. Um, just to kind of say one more thing about it too. But yeah, um, I don't know if they're gonna do that in Red Dead Redemption, but in or the second one. But in the first game, the online multiplayer. If any of you guys got a chance to get your hands on it, it was extremely expansive. I mean, you could go out anywhere. Um, they took away some of the main features like uh, hog tying enemies and stuff. <laughs> that would be unfair. But um, you you could make a uh, a team and go around like pillaging villages and stuff. It was awesome. Um, so if they could add on to that, I honestly don't know what they could possibly add on more, but um, the online was awesome in Red Dead, so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, but, yeah definitely. Uh, I definitely think it'd be fun, and uh, I, I like that we kind of did a teaser of what we're going to be doing you know, later on this season. Um, I definitely think we're going to jump to a video game podcast later. we got all types of ideas for, for this season on, on GL Comics, so I'll be looking forward to that. Uh, we're definitely going to talk about uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, new video games coming out. We're going to talk about uh, Dragon Ball Z, I think, finally. We, we were trying to get to it last season, never got a chance. And uh, we're definitely going to have Matt be, be back in the next episode. Uh, he, he was available to be here tonight. It's just, uh, you know, he didn't want to ruin these movies for him. So uh, he's he'll be back ne- next time. And uh, I, Chaz, I mean, hopefully you're, you're off for the summer. So hopefully you'll be able to uh, do a lot more of these with us. Yeah, I had a few things to do over the weekends. Um, I'm actually going to be doing one of those uh, tough murder competitions pretty soon here, so I'm going to be training for that and whatnot. But that's one day on a weekend, so I still should be able to do uh, so Saturdays like we usually do. Um, oh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Plenty more stuff coming out this summer. We got, uh, what was it, new Transformers, for those yep. of you who care. <laughs> um, and plenty more stuff coming out. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go into depth on the uh, TMNT debacle once we start hearing more rumors and stuff. But um, on top of all that, you know, be looking for, uh, be looking more on the GEL Comics Facebook page again. It's facebook.com slash GEL Comics. Uh, we're going to be, you know, posting kind of some updates and everything like that. Um, over the summer, hopefully, I'm going to have a little more time, so I'm going to get in the process of cataloging uh, all my comic books and go through that. And then I'm also going to be trying to meet with a couple of local comic book shops and kind of get some advertisement for the podcast and get that going. So 
trying to expand a little bit, but just be looking looking on the podcast page. I'll post a link in in, in the description and everything like that. But uh, yeah, fifty five minutes is the total. I mean, this is a this is, has definitely been the epitome of a extended season two opening. So uh, definitely looking forward to this season. Going to have a lot of cool stuff to talk about and uh, just going to have some fun with it. And just you know, basically we're just going to talk like like we normally talk like. When you hear us on a podcast, it's not like we, we, we sit down and prep lines for stuff. Like, this is the kind of conversation we have in everyday life. So, you kind of get the view into that world. You get to just nerd out with us for a little bit. So, uh, be looking forward to that in the near future. And uh, season two, here we go. We're jumping right into it. So, uh, for GL Comics, I'm Ray Emling. I'm not going to come up with a creative name. It's just going to be straightforward with you guys for the first time ever. But I'm Ray Emling. And I'm having I actually legally changed my name, so we're good. Yeah, you're not even making up names. You are having I mean, I was going to go with something like, I, I was going to say like I was like Wolverine, like uh, the guy who gives Wolverine's prostate exam. But, you know, I wasn't sure if, you, if you'd be on your toes or not. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to throw you under the bus. But yeah, uh, for GL Comics, I'm, uh, I'm Patrick Stewart's hair. And I'm still having <laughs> Have a good night, everyone.